It may surprise you to learn that only 32% of real estate investors are women, according to Zipia and Forbes. Meanwhile, 23% of Americans admit that real estate investing is a proven way to build generational wealth. Jasmine Salinas spends her days committed to one singular mission. She helps business owners invest in real estate with confidence. She's fiercely dedicated to empowering women to create generational wealth through real estate. Salinas is a relationship and investor manager for Massive Capital, where she tells and shows business owners the positive benefits of how their portfolio and bottom line can change through real estate. According to Salinas, anyone can overcome obstacles in life and in real estate if they're committed to the theory of rolling up their sleeves and constructing a game plan with sustainable staying power. And Salinas took some time out of her extraordinarily busy schedule this week to join me to engage in conversation about real estate investing, women's empowerment, and so much more. I know I'm excited to bring you this comprehensive conversation about real estate, life, and everything in between. So without further delay, I'm Kevin McShan. Let's have this conversation. So, Jasmine, if you're ready, I'll take a moment to welcome you to the program. And I'm super excited to learn how you help women empower, empower themselves through real estate. Great to see you this afternoon. And thank you so very much for being here. Of course, of course. My pleasure. Absolutely. Now, uh, Jasmine, I know that you're all about giving women the power to empower themselves through generational wealth through real estate. So I'm wondering if you can tell me about all the hard work that you do. Yeah, of course. So I founded Massive Capital Girls Society. So it's a community of women who are actually looking to create generational wealth through real estate, but also grow on every single aspect of, our, of their lives, like personally, professionally, and spiritually. So we're being different uh, speakers from different backgrounds uh, who are, uh, you know, in the mission to, to create wealth and empower other women. Yeah, absolutely. And tell me about the personal satisfaction you get from the work that you do. How gratifying is it for you personally? Of course, it's a lot because I personally, I had to open all, all my doors. You know, nobody was telling me how to do it. I didn't have a community. I didn't have anybody who I could just go and ask. So now that I have this community, so rewarding that we can fast track their real estate investment goals, that they have a community where they can be feel inspired, supported. They can just seek for any help. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that you've got a quite the impressive uh, real estate portfolio. And I know that you've been active in, in real estate investing for a few years now, and you've got over 800 units and, and those uh, sort of things. So tell me about 
uh, building a success in the business. What, what is, what's the greatest lesson you think you've learned in business throughout the years? Uh, so, you know, how I actually got to start and build this portfolio that you mentioned is just by, first of all, setting my mind that this is what I want to do. And second, like, let me just find the people. Let me find somebody who is already doing it. And the biggest lesson that I learned was like, it's so different when you just add value to people. At the beginning, I wasn't thinking like, oh, what's in it for me? what's going to be my share, how much I'm going to make. I was just looking to add value to my partners. And after that, like I added so much value that they brought me as a partner on massive capital, you know, and that just unlocked so many doors and so many doors that probably I don't see just yet. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I know, uh, Jasmine, you live by the motto that people can use their obstacles to achieve, success, uh, to, uh, achieve success if they start with, with, with their commitment to their goals. So tell me about your life model or your business model and why it's so important to you. Yeah, so, you know, personally, I'm on a mission to help people leave a legacy. I feel like all of us are looking to leave a better legacy for the generations to come to make better impact in life grow and when i have the vehicle that is gonna not just only help me be but you know because i i can do open a business or you know the, get a really high paid job and that's it but i'm really looking to impact others help them and just open the doors for some others that are not satisfied on their jobs or on their money, their returns, their investments. Yeah, and while we're having this conversation, Jasmine, about women empowerment, I'm curious, how do you think we can elevate more women to positions of leadership in business and, and real estate? What do you think are the keys to that? Uh, so, you know, that's actually part of why I did this, because I noticed that there is a very few women uh, transition, transition into these levels. So what I will say that, like, we need to put ourselves out there. Like, most of the time, we need to show up. And it's very intimidating being in this industry where it's, like, very highly male-dominated, but we need to put ourselves out there. Like we need to show up. We need to open our own doors. Like nobody's going to come and offer you an opportunity or tell you like, what kind of skill set do you have? And I need it. You need to show up and tell them like, this is my skill set. Is this something that I can, uh, you know, a way that I can add value to you? Yeah. And let's talk about overcoming investment barriers in real estate. What do you think of the keys for anyone who have experienced barriers or <laughs> just getting out in the field, what do you think is the key to making sure that they really, really can maximize their potential and overcome those barriers? So the first thing I will always say is like, you need to invest on yourself because, you know, they're all the barriers and everything is so those are things that you can unlock by having the knowledge. So when you first invest in yourself, you know, about the real estate market, but also other skill sets like negotiation, talking, marketing, all those skill sets are going to open doors and make you feel more confident about, you know, negotiating with your partner, with your partners, with sellers, understanding the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. And, Tell me when you first start out in real estate, do you believe in, in the theory of investing within your means? And what do you think is the key to getting more capital to build that real estate portfolio? Yeah, so that's actually a good thing because uh, most of the people think like to get started in real estate or to, you know, buy apartment buildings, you need to have like, 20 million in your bank account. I know you can use other people's money. What we do is a model called syndication, but it's pretty much like a pool of investors. Like we all come together to buy assets and we also get loan. 
from the bank to buy this property. So we just pretty much bring all the people together, put the loan together, and that's how we can manage this, uh, take down this assets. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what, and no, no matter what field of business you're in or what profession you're in, building confidence is an important part of what we do as entrepreneurs and business people. So tell me, what do you think is the key to building sustainable confidence in business? I will say your skill set, you know, confidence is something very internal. And sometimes we, you know, that's the way we're raised with some others. Like we need to work in it. Like that's something like no matter where you are in life, you always need to work in because there's always somebody who's going to be way better, way ahead of the game. But that's something that is like personal. And one of the things that I do is like, People ask me, like, why are you so confident? No, I'm not. I just decide to show up. I just decide, like, I'm not confident. I'm intimated. But the, I don't let that stop me to do what I want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and to that point, how important is it, do you think, for people to really invest in the process of, them, of themselves when they're an investor? What I mean by that is how important do you think it is for people to be assertive and really go after what they want in real estate. Yeah, it's absolutely important. You know, one of the things is like, we need to pretty much empower ourselves, you know, like nobody's going to come and do it. We need to um, just buckle up, understand where we are and just continue, chase, go for it, show up, like nobody's going to do it for you. Yeah, absolutely. And when we look at the real estate market today, I'm curious, what sort of uh, trend or what sort of uh, uh, sort of ideals should investors have in the back of their mind before they invest in, in property on a larger scale? What is sort of the checklist that each investor should have before investing in your view? Exactly. Uh, that's a really good question. And actually, I put together an ebook that is just like, if you were planning to invest this at all, the main, the most important thing is the people that you're investing with, the partnership, because you can have the best deal, the best location, you can negotiate the best loan. But if the operators, people who are managing all these assets, they don't have the experience, you know, everything can go out in in months, you know, you can lose it all. Because one thing is like to negotiate a deal, but the other part is like operate the property. Most of the properties, we hold them for five years. So during those five years, we need to make sure we don't target with all the numbers, investors, uh, GC contractors, property managers, all that. So that's what the main thing, like as investors, if you're planning to invest, I will, the first homework that I will do is, Check out the team, do your own due diligence, learn about their track record, what ha what they have done, uh, have they lost money for their investors, you know, all that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I'm curious to get your thoughts on how we can help uh, women and individuals with disabilities get into real estate to really make it an inclusive environment. How do you think we can? create an environment in real estate to make it more inclusive for all people of all abilities. Yeah, we, you know, that's actually the best part that we are able, we do all the heavy lifting, you know, if people have like a IRA in uh, 401k, uh, other, you know, uh, savings on online, like we can help them use those funds and pretty much once you you send the money like we do all the heavy lifting you know let's say you invest one hundred thousand dollars our goal is gonna be to turn it into 115 and 250 in five years you know and you get you know during those five years you get cash flow and all that distributions but pretty much we do all the heavy lifting you don't have to worry about anything and you know 
uh, you know, chasing the leases and taking the property manager. So that's a really good opportunity uh, for people with disabilities. If they have some savings and they want to put their money to work, we definitely can help them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Joshua, tell me about the importance of tenacity in the work you do. How important is it for you to really be assertive and go after uh, sort of your goals in life and, uh, and in business? So how important uh, do you view the concept of tenacity in the work that you do? Yeah, I mean, everything in real estate is about tenacity. It's about how quick you can act, about how, how much risk you can take. Uh, you know, because what we say is like we are building businesses. We are building and, you know, of course, the higher the risk, the higher the investment. But we're trying to minimize all the risk just because what is happening on the market. So definitely, you know, every every single move that we do needs to be uh, with tenacity. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's what I, I'm curious, where uh, you get your individual passion for the work that you do, because I know you work with a group of women who have a lot of personality. So tell me, where do you get the passion for the work that you do? Uh, well, the passion is like just giving back to society. Uh, you know, I feel very blessed to be on this side of the table and, you know, helping, uh, you know, growing my portfolio and all that, having access to partners and mentors. And that's pretty much like my daily life. But that doesn't really count if I'm not sharing that with anybody. That's my way to give back to the society and just share, you know, share my my network, the knowledge that I get from all these masterminds of these uh, mentors. So I just wanted to open the door and share, you know, it's a way to give back to the community. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Jasmine, my final question for you this afternoon has to do with your own individual and uh, uh, professional legacy and how you want your legacy to be defined. Uh, say it again, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I'm just curious about what, when you look at your life and your legacy, how do you want that to be defined? So the first thing that I want to, you know, for what I always ask myself, like, when I died, why I want people to, to think about me. And that's part of my legacy. I want people to remember me like I was a uh, people who see I was an example that when you put God first, he will unlock any every door like he will take care of your personal, professional life and you know, it's just, it's just you putting God first and he will take care of everything. Yeah, absolutely. And tell me, uh, Jeff, and finally, if people want to get connected with you, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, they can visit my website, massive.capital slash Jasmine, and Jasmine spells J-A-Z-M-I-N. Fantastic. Well, uh, Jasmine, I truly enjoyed a chance to spend a couple of minutes with you to talk about women in Parliament, real estate, and everything in between, my friend. Your work in the space in town on my behalf is most appreciated, and I want to thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.